Hello, my name is Michael Miedema, Director of Cardiovascular Prevention for the Nolan Family Center for Cardiovascular Health at the Minneapolis Heart Institute Foundation. Here at the Nolan Family Center, we're committed to helping prevent heart disease by conducting research and educating individuals about healthy lifestyle practices. Today we're going to talk about aspirin. Aspirin has been used for decades to lower risk for heart attack and stroke. I frequently have patients tell me that they take an aspirin today just to be safe. So the question is, is that really a safe decision? And who exactly should and shouldn't take a daily aspirin to reduce their cardiovascular risk? Before we answer that question, let's look at how a heart attack actually occurs. Most people think of heart attacks as a plumbing issue, where the pipes are slowly clogging up over time and then one day they clog off and you have a heart attack. It's not entirely how it works. Yes, the cholesterol filled plaques can take years to develop, but they aren't necessarily blocking blood flow. So they're not likely to cause symptoms and therefore people may not be aware that they exist. However, in certain situations, one of those plaques can rupture. And when they rupture, the cholesterol and inflammatory material inside the plaque begins to leak out into the blood vessel. Platelets come along and stick to it and form a clot. And so if that clot is large enough, it can cause a complete blockage, which then causes a heart attack. Aspirin has the potential to reduce the size of the clot sticking to that ruptured plaque and thereby avoid the heart attack. Certain strokes can occur in a similar fashion, which is why aspirin is associated with a reduction in stroke risk as well. Many studies have examined the benefits and risks of aspirin. If you want to study a treatment in the best way possible, it should be done through a randomized controlled trial. This is where you take a big group of participants and split them randomly into two groups. Half are assigned to take a daily aspirin, half are assigned to take a placebo which has no aspirin in it. You then follow them for a number of years and at the end of the study, simply compare the rates of heart attack and stroke between the two groups and determine if there's a benefit. This is really the best and only way to determine if a treatment is beneficial. There's been some confusion over the years regarding the results of some of these studies with aspirin. The randomized trials performed in the 1980s and 1990s did show a significant benefit with taking an aspirin with reductions in both heart attack and stroke. However, the more recent trials have showed only a small benefit or no benefit for those without cardiovascular disease, depending on the population studied. Explaining the reasons for this decrease is complicated, but it likely has to do with the fact that we've developed a lot of other effective preventive interventions over time. So we have better treatments for cholesterol, better treatments for blood pressure, we have less smoking, all those things add up to reduce the risk of heart attack. And so the benefit of aspirin in the current populations is quite small. The other thing that's been found is that in these trials, we've seen a significant increase in bleeding. Uh, not necessarily traumatic bleeding, but rather gastrointestinal or GI bleeding. So in the modern era, the benefit of aspirin seems to be quite small and at the cost of a significant increase in GI bleeding. So here are the most up-to-date recommendations for use of aspirin. If you have a history of prior cardiovascular disease, meaning you've had a heart attack, a stroke, bypass, or stents, you should take a daily aspirin. Those recommendations have not changed over time. For individuals without any prior cardiovascular disease, the recommendations depend on your level of cardiovascular risk as well as your level of your risk for bleeding. Cardiovascular risk is determined based on the presence of traditional risk factors such as hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, and lifestyle behaviors such as diet, exercise, and tobacco use. Importantly, the most potent risk factor for cardiovascular disease by far is age. So older individuals need to pay attention to their cardiovascular risk even if they have a low burden of other traditional risk factors. And so if you're at low cardiovascular risk, meaning you're young, you have no traditional cardiovascular risk factors, you shouldn't take a daily aspirin. The risks of bleeding outweigh the benefits. If you have a high bleeding risk, meaning either a prior bleeding episode or you're already on a blood thinner, say for atrial fibrillation or for prior blood clots, you should not take an aspirin. Additionally, for those who are over age 70, without prior cardiovascular disease, they're not recommended to take an aspirin. The risk of bleeding seems to outweigh the benefit. Finally, for middle-aged adults, meaning age 40 to 79 years old, who are at elevated cardiovascular risk but low bleeding risk, then taking an aspirin may be reasonable and worth discussing with your cardiologist or primary care provider. As a preventive cardiologist, I have conversations with my patients every day about whether or not an aspirin would be helpful, and these are some of the questions that I often get. What is the right dose of aspirin? For the vast majority of patients, an 81 milligram baby aspirin is the recommended dose. Can the aspirin be coated? Yes, a coated aspirin may be a little easier on the stomach and is a reasonable option for people with prior gastrointestinal side effects from aspirin. Can I stop aspirin if I'm already taking one? For individuals with established cardiovascular disease, so prior heart attack or stroke or prior bypass or stents, you generally should not stop the aspirin and should discuss it with your primary care provider or cardiologist before you do. For those without heart disease or heart procedures, the aspirin can potentially be stopped, but again, I would recommend this be discussed with your healthcare provider. I hope you found this video useful. Here at the Nolan Family Center for Cardiovascular Health at the Minneapolis Heart Institute Foundation, education is a core part of our mission. I encourage you to share this video widely with your family and friends and anyone you think would benefit. You can also check our website for other educational materials. Thanks again and stay heart healthy.